It's a delight to bring you another episode of NAVDAC and Your Health, that TV program that intimates you on the activities of NAVDAC at ensuring that we remain safe and healthy. My name is Amanda Ugo. Today on NAVDAC and Your Health, we are starting with the efforts of NAVDAC at preventing diversion of regulated products, particularly narcotics and controlled substances, along the supply chain. We will also look at how track and trace is used as a digitized tool to control the manners, dovetailing into the recently held stakeholders meeting held with manufacturers and distributors of narcotics and controlled substances by NAVDAC's Directorate of Narcotics and Controlled Substances. Then in the second segment, we'll be looking at the enforcement activities of NAVDAC and the strategies employed by the agency in effectively carrying out these activities. The General Regulating and Control of Food and Drugs, which is the primary mandate of NAVDEC, is one responsibility that the agency has had to confront headlong because of the enormity of the task. As the agency sees to the registration of the regulated product under its purview, it also has to ensure that the approved products are produced with a level of quality approved, that the products are not compromised or diverted along the supply chain, that they are not counterfeited, and that they are not abused. The management of the agency has continually harnessed all machineries to atop the daunting challenges capable of clogging its path. Now we have digital tool that is helping us and then we have a lot of training going on because you have to keep training and training and training and training regulatory officers uh, for pharmacovigilance for example the training has helped us a lot the digital tool has helped us much much more the quality management system is the umbrella around all this. Uh, so our reporting system has become so much better than what it used to be. Uh, because our motto is customer focus agency minded. If I don't think of how my work is going to affect you as a customer, there's going to be a gap. Whether I'm the accountant, or the pharmacovigilance officer, or the admin officer, or the enforcement. What is my, what, what am I doing that may affect what the customer gets? So that quality system is there and we are improving on it every day. But in terms of pharmacovigilance, we are doing very well. Uh, but we are going to do better. Because NAVDAC is the center for pharmacovigilance. Uh, in the, for, the, for the country, but we also have six zonal pharmacovigilance centers. Track and trace of a product is a good way to know what is going on with that product at time T. And I got to actually know about track and trace as a regulatory activity through um, another sector, not even drug, the food sector. And then we had this, there was this meeting, First African GS1. GS1 is the standard for barcoding. Meeting, it took place in Ethiopia in 2018. And I asked one of our staff to go. And from there, discussion ensued. And they said, OK, oh, you have the second one in Lagos. We had the big one in Lagos, November, uh, September 2019, and 25 African countries came uh, with a lot of international partners, and we took a call to action, the, all the 25 African countries, that we will use track and trace to ensure we reduce the level of falsification, the level of pilferage or theft, the level of diversion of medicines, at least we focus on medicines right now, we are going to food uh, also. Uh, and I will say the rest is history. One of the areas that NAVDEC has been challenged to deploy the expertise of the agency's dynamic workforce and maximally explore the potentials of traceability is the area of narcotics and controlled substances. This phenomenon has over time constituted a menace that needs concerted efforts to nip it on the board. 
The agency's directorate in charge of narcotics and controlled substances has, however, displayed unparalleled efficiency in tackling the challenge. Part of this was the recent stakeholders meeting organized by the Directorate of Narcotics and Controlled Substances of NABDAC at the agency's office complex in Lagos. There, the director in charge of the directorate, pharmacist Yeduni Adenuga, in her welcome address, gave insight into the traceability initiative being implemented by NABDAC in tackling the menace of drug diversion. As you are all aware, narcotic and controlled medicines are going to be captured under the final scheme of the traceability initiative being implemented by NAFTA. This is part of the agency's commitment to ensuring the safety and security of narcotics and controlled substances and to ensure that there is a balance between access to and control of these medicines. The director decried the numerous dangers inherent in drug diversion, stating the traceability implementation plan to control the chaotic drug distribution system in Nigeria. Narcotics and controlled substances are indispensable for medical and scientific purposes, yet have a high abuse potential. Nigeria is a signatory to the three international conventions which provide framework for the control of narcotic medicines, psychotropic substances, and precursors for medical and scientific purposes only, while preventing diversion. Thus, these substances are controlled under international conventions and or national procedures. It is essential to note that challenges arising from drug supply and consumption, as well as diversion and illicit production are not to people who use drugs, but have wider health, social and economic consequences on the family, community and country. The effects are seen in various sectors, including public health and security. We have invited US from Nigeria and New South Nigeria PLC to talk to us on the modalities of ensuring that we have a rich free pilot so that our businesses will not be negatively affected. I want to assure you that this is the way to go, as we must ensure that narcotic medicines are handled appropriately and with all sense of responsibility. We realize that the onerous task of safeguarding the health of the nation is daunting, particularly in the case of the chaotic drug distribution system that we have in this country. Uh, the falsification and diversion of health commodities carry very The consideration of these consequences vis a vis the mandate given to NAFTA to regulate and control, among other things, the distribution of drugs and other regulated products is sufficient motivation to implement pharmaceutical possibility to complement the fight against the menace of standard and classified medicines and to improve the regulatory control of the medicine supply chain. And of course, you will agree with me that the uh, menace of the chaotic drug distribution that we have also has greatly affected the uh, uh, control of narcotics. I mean, it, it's not it's not just by accident that we call them control substances. It is such that they do not fall in the wrong hands. In her presentation, Mrs. Christine Oyewo from GS1 Nigeria methodically explained to the attendees what traceability is and the standards acceptable in track and trace. What we do in GS1 is that we work in many sectors of the economy. So whenever you go into a supermarket and you go to a shelf and you pick up items that you need to buy, you will find out that when you get to the cashier, the cashier is scanning a barcode on that item. And while the cashier is scanning the barcodes on those items, is to actually get correct information with respect to both the product itself and the price of the product. So when you are paying, you are paying for exactly what you are buying. Just one standards framework consists of three sets of standards. The first are our identity. 
identify standards, which are identification kits. You have been asked to get two of them, the global trade item number and the global location number, because you will need these two keys for the traceability pilots. We actually encode our identification keys in our capture standards. And for the purpose of this pilot, the capture standards are going to be barcodes. We're going to be speaking a little bit about that. And to create and to complete the traceability cycle, what we then do is we then share information through scanning about products using our third standard, which is our share standard for event data. And event data is really just all about what is happening to products as they move from one place to another. According to Mrs. Oyewo, global trade item number and the global location number are the two identification keys required in traceability. The global trade item number is actually uh, our identification key that is actually required to um, identify items that are traded, bought or sold or in any supply chain. It is actually our most commonly used um, identification um, key in the fact that it is, um, it is actually um, the one that uh, we use to identify items of trade. So all your narcotics products will be identified with a global trade item number. Secondly, the second um, key identification key that is required for traceability is actually the global location number. The global location number is required for the identification of any physical location through which any narcotic product is going to pass. So that means that all your manufacturing plants, for those of you who are in Nigeria, all manufacturing plants outside of Nigeria, for those of you that import, and your, and your offices and your depots will be identified with a global location number. There was also a question and answer session where the participants asked questions to have clarification on the presentation. You have been tuned to NAVDAC and your health. Stay tuned as we have more for you after the short break. Welcome back. You are still watching NAVDAC and your health. NAVDAC as an agency is empowered to oversee the administration and control of all kinds of food products, drugs, and other regulated products that are made available for use and consumption of the Nigerian public. In other words, any products that fall under the NAVDAC regulated products found in the Nigerian markets for purchase, whether locally made or imported, must have been approved by the agency. It is therefore the responsibility of NAVDAC to go after distributors or sellers of such products that have not undergone its scrutiny. On this edition of this program, our focus is on the efforts of NAVDAC towards ensuring that unapproved regulated products that have found their ways into the Nigerian market through clandestine means and have been sold to the public are found out, retrieved from the market, and their peddlers are brought to book. The agency also clamps down on inappropriate storage and exhibition for sale that could have negative effects on these products. The strength of a regulatory agency also lies in the enforcement. In fact, if there is no enforcement, there will not be a regulatory agency because a regulatory agency is supposed to enforce or to control, of course, the regulatory activities and to enforce to ensure that people do not violate the regulations. Therefore, enforcement is extremely important in NAVDAC, uh, but it is not just as part of our regular activities. The Federal Tax Force C-34 uh, law is domiciled in NAVDAC. The headquarters of the Federal Tax Force is in NAVDAC. And it is supposed to, the Federal Tax Force is supposed to control uh, to ensure there are no fake medicines in the country 
no unwholesome food in the country. Uh, and with that federal tax force headquarters in Lagos, you have 36 state tax forces. So it, enforcement is so important for NAVDAC as a regulatory agency, but in terms of food, drugs, chemicals, and all the things that it is extremely important for the country. That is part of the reason why it has been domiciled in NAVDAC. People may not understand what NAVDAC is in terms of enforcement, but we are also policemen in, you know, looking, at, looking out for violators to ensure there will be deterrent, they will not repeat whatever they did before. We have about 75, um, almost 80 policemen attached to NAVDAC because of this federal tax force that is domiciled in NAVDAC. And the enforcement can be as simple as somebody resisting NAVDAC to enter their property, and then the enforcement will come in with police to ensure that whatever NAVDAC wanted to see, NAVDAC sees. It can be as simple as that. It can also be, or they can find themselves in a situation where they are keeping vigil at the ports, at the border, for days on end. Through intelligence, when they've been briefed that there, will, there, there is uh, contraband or violated products coming through a particular route, it can be to that point. It can be a raid where they have to go to the market or to a particular site where falsified medicines are being made or sold or whatever uh, or wholesome food. It can be sealing a company, paying on an unannounced visit to a company. Let's say that there is an issue of, of bad distribution of medicine coming from a particular company. It is an activity that takes place almost every minute depending on where informants or the information is coming from. Enforcement cannot happen just within NAVDAC. There is a lot of collaboration with customs, with EFCC, with the World Customs Organization, I've forgotten, the, with Interpol, with FBI, meaning it has now gotten across or go, no, gone across uh, from our country to another country. So enforcement is extremely important. If products are deemed to have been violated, either they are unregistered or they are expired and are being sold, things like that, NAVDAC has the power to seize, to seal, the, the, the site. NAVDAC has the power to arrest if, it, if there is resistance or to prosecute, you know. Uh, and those products that are seized are stored until a time when we can then go and destroy them. And that happens maybe three or four times a year because we want to be sure, because we have to pay uh, for the destruction too, you know. Uh, so we accumulate and then, you know, uh, destroy. This is extremely important uh, because if these products are not seized and destroyed, they're going to be in the circulation, of course. Uh, I will give an example of enforcement activities. It's not just the enforcement directorate that does that. Pharmacovigilance, post-marketing, surveillance also can seize products. If they're resistant, they call enforcement. Any, uh, uh, any of the inspectorate, directorate, food, safety, and applied nutrition, FCT, uh, 
drug evaluation and research, they can put on hold and then they can evacuate if their resistance enforcement comes, comes in. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, dynamics in terms of what happens on, you know, every day. Uh, and uh, as part of our regulatory system strengthening, it's also one of the things that the auditors are looking for. Okay, you see these products. Let us look at your warehouse. Do you know how much is coming in and going out for destruction? Do you have a systematic way of keeping the inventory? Bear in mind that some of the products that we seize may be going through prosecution, or the, the owners or whatever may be going through prosecution. So we have to keep them in such a way that we can retrieve them. We have to keep them in a way that we keep the quality of the system. We cannot just put it in anywhere, in any storage place where the temperature is so high and it breaks down. And then when it comes to the court, they would say, okay, let, let's go and test it. And it's no longer the way it's supposed to, you know, it, it, the quality has, de has decreased. So uh, it is a lot of dynamics, a lot of uh, thoughtfulness that have to be put in it, or science rather, that has to be put in it. So uh, that is our enforcement uh, activities in a nutshell. Peddlers of this illegal product always employ various means to outsmart NAVDAC in their shady businesses. But the NABDAC's Directorate of Investigation and Enforcement, in its innovativeness through surveillance and intelligence, locates these peddlers and their harmful products, and then they carry out exercises to make our markets free of these products. That's all we have for you on this edition of NAVDAC and Your Health. We'll be back again, same time, same station next week, with more updates on the activities of NAVDAC, which is channeled towards safeguarding the health of the nation. Join NAVDAC in the fight against peddlers of unwholesome food products, drugs, cosmetics, and medical equipment. Contact us if you have any complaints, information, or reports. You can reach NAVDAC via toll-free numbers. For inquiries, call 0700-162-3322. For complaints, call 0800-162-3322. 3322. You may also email nafdac at nafdac.gov.ng. If you have complaints about any form of misconduct, you can reach the Reforms Unit via email reforms at nafdac.gov.ng or call the Reforms Hotlines on 0909 763 0506 or 0909-763-0507 NAFDAQ, customer focused, agency minded. It is against the law to import, produce, distribute, market or sell unwholesome food products, drugs, cosmetics and medical equipment as this posed great danger to the health of Nigerians. Let us jointly fight against these heinous crimes. Till we meet again next week, stay healthy.